afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane, a master propaganda hero, psych defender of the fatherland. Off yet an exciting one versus one on a whole lot in favor part by way of a double feature. Yes, indeed, we're going to have two matches again. First off, Ungar versus Luke, then Refro versus Love Nest. But right here, whole lot in favor for now. The setting is 1944, the Eastern Front, somewhere in the Ukraine. The Russians are pushing forwards like a bulldozer. And only Angreif and Israel to hold the land with Germany. Deutschland taking a stand with the Kampfgruppe von Strachwitz. No, not Strachwitz. Von Sauken. Yes, there we go. In the west, we got Luke Preston fighting for the Soviet Union. Socialism. Comrade Stalin rolling out here with the 10th tank corps. And we've got here joint operations. Hello. Mobile defense and elite troops with triple infantry versus Soviet industry. Advanced warfare counterattack tactics versus double infantry grenades here. And a tank specifically for Luke. Double conscript versus going to be MG42. Both players there ending up with sort of, you know, standard builds. Aiming for, well, you know what they sort of, you know, usually go for in these situations. Versus the Wehrmacht, you usually want a lot of conscripts. And versus, the, well, anything really as the Wehrmacht you want, kind of is an MG42 to start off with. Like, there's not really much to vary on there. Some might go for an extra Pioneer squad in the early game, and that's about it. Otherwise, you're going for Osthorpen, in which case you're still going to end up with machine guns. Just with more Osthorpen than Grenadiers. We got Sandbox here being laid down to help defend the northern compartment. A well play there by Luke Preston, of course, also standard play. More going to be allowing for Angreifen, wiring off here and sandbagging. MD4 tuning up here. Angreifen, by the way, fan of setting up the machine gun right around here since most players will rush down here, not inspect a machine gun and get shot to bits. Swing down to the fuel point there, grab the center victory point with the Grenadiers. Second Grenadiers called almost done here, and we got the engineers going north for it. Constantly there, and Sandbox down here. Will he be expecting the machine gun here from Angreifen? Looks like at least he might be sort of sensing something. Petrov, yes! I have a bad feeling about this, like there's a fascist machine gun waiting around the corner. He's just imagining things, but for safety reasons we shall not move. But it's not because of your bad feeling. Controversy gonna do is here. There we go, doubling back to do the Gunnadies around the center. Victory point gonna help new, well, overwhelm them, basically with numbers. Machine gun hangs it's there. Pioneer setting out. Of North country in standby position. There's one Gunnadies moving in. As we can see, everything is slowly beginning to center around well the center here. But there you go, Contra the Gunnadies. The Gunnadies getting a few extra hits here. And Conscripts might have actually moved into position. The Gunnadies got a few extra hits on them, maybe, which might just still the fav engage in the favor of the Gunnadies. Then again, Conscript could win it. A P shot being fired. More Conscript arriving with a fourth infantry squad on the way there for Luke Preystone for the 10th tank on there. Go MD42 to the rescue. Ungard moves away from the south, realizing things are a bit more uh, heated up north. Third Gunnadies squad there setting out. A few shots being fired here, but got the Gunnadies or Conscript inside the church still. Bit of a problem there for Ungard to deal with. And so far, no, I think upgrades here for Luke. Oh, Dice actually have Molotovs, my mistake. They got went for it after the third Conscript squad, which is usually where wanted. And it's also where I go for it if I'm playing the Soto. I usually go for the Molotovs after the third conscript squad if I'm playing against the Wehrmacht. If I'm not playing against the Wehrmacht against the Obercommonist, I'll usually go after the fourth. Gonna be easy versus the conscript. Shots being a bit far back and forth. Up north, engineers setting out. And back here, Medic Banger up front. Garden in this beleaguered Gunnadies in particular. That squad has seen much better days. So hard work here inbound for Angar from his men. His faster land. Back here, troops being well, sort of reinforcing Medic Bunker on the way there. Ungarfen, fond of those. They're not as fond as he is of S mines. I'd not be surprised if he has a small collection of toy S mines in his room, the way he uses them. MD4 truly being repositioned. He's got Conscript moving about that big push here for Luke. Catches Ungarfen machine gun in a really terrible state. And he's going for the fourth gun to the squad there, by the way. Might be playing there for elite troops, a lot of G43s, then stun grenades. Could also be mobile defense, I guess. And joint operations, I mean, there's actually been a slow, small increase in Wehrmacht players actually going for joint operations here of late. So there might be something there with it, but what exactly it is, I am not sure of. Either way, big push here for Luke continues his men charging forwards. Ura! Shoot every fascist! Shoot every traitor! Shoot every counter revolutionary! So shoot everybody! Oh, not us, of course, of course, of course. Of course. Comes to this press for the MD42 Gunnadies moving in a tank assault side here, trying to take the steam out of Luke Preystone's assault here. Comes standing about here, and usually the Germans found the best way to stop a, German, a Russian assault was basically to counterattack it, usually around the spearhead, that way depriving any steam momentum and just throwing it back. 
due to the way the Russians organized their attacks on Anandium. It was basically also the experience that led into forming up the Panzer Brigades. That's a fun note there. These sort of small, heavily armored and armed comfort and they could just throw a lot of firepower to the small specific position that way stop a soda assault in his tracks. It's a little fun note. They can these push back, medic bunker those ready, we got the tech up there. Oh actually no tech up pioneers and they found copies and the other ones got ruthlessly and rudely cut down by the rations. And these was the conscript there, a bit of skirmishing there, we got no further happenings there from Luke. I imagine the medics might soon be happening. In fact they already have. They already have I'm a bit late there. MD forty two there three kills halfway to veterans one. And Garden Quick is extending his pressure into the north, his efforts, his will. So far, no sign of doctrine here from either player. I mean, there are certainly a few surprises here for Luke as well. So, the industry, advanced warfare, and counter attack tactics are all not quite the typical set of doctrines he chose from a third player. But there you go, rations repulsed with some minor losses inflicted upon them. Look, pushing forwards there, praising the stone as always. But why Luke praises the stone, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe when he was a child, he was saved by a rock or something. I don't know. Telemines there, briefly attempted, but stopped once the Russians sort of could see what he was doing. They obviously do not want to see opponent actually laying down mines. And this one for the car point there, going to cut off Luke's fuel supply, trying to give himself an edge there. Very good. I'd like to make a nice company on the way yet here, Philip Frank Garden. And he has the tech, but the build is not quite there. Take up a loot, the support company could go for maximum and mortar to shatter the fascists from above, or just with a lot of bullets. And this was the concept we got the mortar off, hitting the grenadiers and invoking a bit of fire there. Constable's in a bit of a sticky situation. But the pioneers arrived to the situation, turning about, and there you go, flying levels on the way. Not worried about Luke laying down mines, or at least deciding that the priority is burning out Luke. Either way, the flame for his kind of sort of, you know. Important. Grabbing the northern munition. Fuel has been cut off as well. That's going to give Luke here a bit of a headache. He is taking a hit though. We'll probably try and rush out of T-70s that way. Give Panzer Gunner the young guy from a massive headache. And so that is certainly quite nasty. As for the comfortable with Salkin, was actually named after the actual comfortable led by D-Take von Salkin. One of the few men who could actually still intimidate the Fuhrer after the uh, assassination attempt. We always got really, shall we say, stubborn about things, but one of the few men who could intimidate them was Dietrich von Salken. Fun fact. Telemans is still about not finished up, pushing in north to the consequence and listing when they can. Noting the upgrades for them yet, could still be leaving a door open for the G-43s. Of course, light machine guns might be the end game. Either way, I'd like to make a nice company up there for Ungarfen. Rifle flying through the sky, shattering upon the rations and the wood. Mostly the wood, but somewhat the conscripts. Still on Governor using all of this to build ahead for a nice lead. Very good. Lots of healing. In the south, we got Luke Sneaking Falls there. Still no doctoral choice for either player. Certainly, there's a lot of, you know, anxiety, at least in you know, anticipation. Like, what could they be going for? I mean, I'm curious. I really want to see because there's so many interesting doctrines here to an extent. I mean, mobile defense is obviously the least interesting, but, you know, joint operations, even elite troops, you know, does, you know, holds a bit of a surprise then. Compared to the certain industry, advanced warfare and counter attack tactics, certainly, you know, are much more rare than you use Soviet doctrines. So there's a lot of, you know, potential here that could be interesting for Mine went off there, so he mm, might want to actually go for mine troopers, though. He does actually not have a second pioneer squad, so he could still go for mine sweepers, and he does, he does. Grand point C, in this case, sandbags and mines, actually just mines being laid down to catch up any fascists. Back here, troops hitting and forcing. Medics on the way. Back here in Luke's base, nothing further happening. The tank tank command stands silent, empty. <laughs> Spotting the unfinished mines. Unclam's gonna get punished here for not finishing them or canceling them. That's going to be really awkward. That's just 50 missions, then you have the potential of doing anything. Nothing further going on. They're going to just put water center straight into the line of fire with the rations. Luke here seems to be a bit dithering at the moment. I mean, he does a lot of manpower floating about. Could be he's unsure of what he wants to choose for here against Ungarthen, though. A T 70 right now would be really strong since Ungarthen has. Well, no anti-tank weapons. I mean, the Telemann wasn't even finished, and still that got disrupted. So, I mean, right now, some tanks would be really strong there for Luke. We could also theoretically go for counter-attack tactics, go for some shock troopers, which could potentially also do some serious damage to Ungleifen. 
by way of thinking has actually lost the gun as he scored, if I'm not mistaken. Indeed he has, plus the pioneers. So look, those getting some good hits in, but he's himself bleeding out. So he hasn't actually suffered any casualties, of course, there's also the issue of him just floating a lot of resources. All the way though, we got the pack floating on the way there for Angreifen for the German army. Luke, though, really needs to spend his manpower. I am not entirely sure what's going on here with Luke, though. He's usually a stronger player than this, but there might be something that's bothering him. Maybe he's just trying to figure out. Is my opponent preparing for an, you know, a tiger race? Is my opponent preparing for it, or is this something else? Went for the German action for the Russians. Idiot. Me, that is. Pack 40 with Daniel Fun. Luke, though, is still in the holding pattern. Finally goes for the Tsum light tank, though. He's finally, you know, putting the. Soviet pedal to the Stalinist metal. Going for the field gun as well here. Probably starting to worry about Ankar going for armor. Still, I would say that is in a several minute just moment of disintegrating about there is usually not going to get a bit more, much pressure on the field sooner. In particular, the T70 could have hit much sooner. So, definitely, I would say a bit of a flub there. Bit of a flub. S-Mines down there, nice spot there from Ungarden again, Ungarden is an absolute fan of S-Mines. He's one of the few players I know to consistently use S-Mines over everyone else. And I give it those ever someone trying to impersonate Ungarden, you just have to look, is the guy actually lying down S-Mines? If not, he's not Ungarden. But there you go, Pioneer's Repulse here, comes with those gun diesel, gun diesel back in a bit of sticky position. And there we go, full retreat. Nice play there by Luke, they're slowly up in Angarden. We can see he's building up the center. Strong point of the machine gun in the pack 40. T70 is also done here for Luke, Playstone, and the Red Army. T70 Norfords. Going straight there for the Pioneers. Pursuing them with all aggression here. We got the counter standing about. Bunker up here for Angreifen to defend the center against the Bolsheviks. So doing a round of the ration now does seem a bit uh, bold. Also, of course, building it in the middle of the bloody road. Heinz? Yeah. Maybe we should, you know, build this thing slightly next to the road rather than in the middle of it. Don't be silly. But why? I don't see why. Well, because I say so. Well, there you go, fill them out, and there you go. Road machine gun bunker is going to turn out to be not an amazingly stout idea. And I like the idea of building machine gun bunkers, but you know, you probably should have one down here instead, or at least if it's going to be here, it should be more like, you know, angled in some way, so I could be shot at directly, that easily. So that could have been uh, slightly done better. We got Taylor of Angreifen. Luke himself, of course, all take considering up. He's back to flying manpower again. Luke seems unsure of the situation. It might just be A, he's tired, or B, it's just the doctor who shows there for Mankind. He's leaving Luke a lot less certain about things. Like, he's trying to hedge his bets as much as possible. At the same time, it's causing some sort of command paralysis, which is usually not a situation you want to be in. As that strategically just hands the initiative to Angarf, and even tactically Duke is doing what Luke is doing well. Strategically he is, you know, fumbling a bit about. Enemy are a, a bit too close to the Panther Fast, but we'll get knocked out here by the Pack 40, which is definitely great there for the T70 crew. I mean you would not like to get murdered by that up north here. You got Angarf now making push with the Pioneer, laying down Telemans there, an aggressive old position, flare goes off though, killing for Jürgen. My god, did you see that? Yeah, such pretty fireworks. Jürgen said, you idiot. Jürgen said, oh, well, yes, yeah, Satu, Satu. Bongineers there for Luke to support and possibly build up. I do think a maximum auto would be quite good for uh, Luke here versus Angreifen because a doctrine though, again. Angreifen would also benefit from a doctrine. He would also benefit from the support McCoy. He's certainly got the resource to push out for some fast tanks, I feel. Here versus Luke. Down there with the S mines again. Sehr good. And there you go. Comes flying up behind here. Gonna be something up with hard hitting firepower. And there you go. Multiple the machine gun. Angarf no swift to react and reposition his machine and gewehr. And there we go. Luke pulling ahead for the mechanized armor company. But there's still no real sign of any other rock. Planning unit wiped out. 
feel them bombarding, shells flying through the air, and the dirt is uh, well being knocked about there by it. But uh, beyond that, not really a lot else happening. Put build this upon core now. Hitting the southern fuel point, very good. Luke fine ready to return the favor there to Hunt. Got Volvo's harassment. Looks like gonna set the machine gun here to maybe even sort of threaten the retreat path there. More mines going off somewhere, and there you go. Up north, t being being dealt with, uh, dealing with the pioneers, not the other way around. There you go, Luke Fan begins to spend manpower again. More trying to wait for some material support here versus Angreif and Andy Kampf. Gruppe von Salken. Now the two bash, and there you go. One hell of a hit, almost taking out the entire gun. The caught with a single shot, leaving only one poor, confused survivor. Back here, so Paul McCall is done here. Vanguard begin immediately push for the Panzer IV. Might certainly increase the incentive here for counterattack tactics for Luke and the, you know, KV-1. He's also building a f munitions carrier now. That's a curious timing for that. I think a fuel carrier would have been a better choice. Certainly begs the question what exactly Luke is planning is going for a munitions cache now. Certainly might slightly strengthen the case of him suffering from a bit of command paralysis. All oh, the way back, forty moving about in the south, they're ready to fend off against any T semi raids. Look, there's all ice seizing back most of the territory. Victory Pond wise, they're actually pretty close with a small lead to Angreifen. But the German army. Comes running out there straight for the S minefields. There you go, half the unit gone. Blasted into hell. Nassaf, he's going for the gun of the east here, needs to be careful, don't get too close to the Panzerfaust. Up north here, we got to push ahead, there we got the gun of the east, we pioneers with flame first flashing out the conscripts. And the Panzerfaust here rides for Undive and... Adding the Pindle Mark Machine here to the Panzerfaust. Pioneers push back with the T-70, field them ready, and there you go, and Guinness in the fire from the Panzer IV. Great take from the field, and then the Panzer IV up north, here we got the Guinness versus Guinness, almost taking them out. There we go, into tank grenade, young guy, could be punished for extending his Panzer IV without any support and being a bit chosen, reckless with it. Leaning his Panzer IV dangling a bit about there, which is not really where he wanted to be dangling about, if at all. Pack 40 building top of there, we've got the machine gun covering up the retreat of the Pack 40. Good work there by Angraven at least a bit. But still, neither player has chosen a doctrine We're almost 20 minutes into the game, and there's just a complete lack of doctrines. Though they also now more or less consistently flowing the same amount of resources. Finally, here, Luke Preystone goes for counter attack tactics. KV 1 shot to potentially, of course, performed by the Russia. Put all the interesting choices of Luke Preston versus Ankaifen, who remains so doctrineless. But I would say that definitely indicates he's going to go for the K1 heavy tank to roll over Ankaifen. More sandbags in the north, Panzer they're being fixed up, both pioneers are working. And there we go, we got joint operations. We do, by Jove, get joint operations. Really do not see this doctrine lot on 1 versus 1 team and 2 versus 2s, but here we are. Joint operations with Angreifen. Could go for the officer, every Conson, I guess, and there's also the Pack 43 or the Howitzer. And finally, you also just got the light to lose the We'll see what he ends up with here. Has been lost. Looks like something got wrecked. Was another attempt at a bunker that got, uh, shall we say, cancelled by the Russians. And there we go. We get the house up for Angreifen. We do get a lighter Feldhaubitzer. Fascinating work there, Panther moving towards the centre. Folks in the center, but we find the field gun yeah, could easily get bombarded. There you go, Luke is on it, hammering away, flooding out of manpower again. Though it still feels like Luke is unsure how he wants to do this. Might be trying out this strategy, and he's finding himself with a lot of uh, um, moments like a kid, you know, supposed to have some sort of you know, speech in front of the entire class and just you know, 
struggles to find the words because he only knew kind of the entire thing the day before. It kind of feels like the same thing with Luke, except uh, um, he's spent a lot of manpower. And we go Flugan crew wiped out, can't fall to take now, give it the Panther 1 to tank, and it goes off, but doesn't leave the match against the Panther 4, leaving it reasonably intact. K1 on the way there, houses Alter ready to unleash hell upon Luke Preystone's head. And there goes this about stop. This sets about destroying the Kanskas first, maybe. And decides to feel the Mr. Bigger priority. And we got a Tilifar rain down as well here. In this case, I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to do with it though. It just seems like a perf a waste of a perfectly good barrage. And what is this? We actually get the artillery field officer out here for hand garden as well. So we got the house and the officer. I love to see if he actually uses them both in conjunction with each other. I mean, the officer could for something to use his um, coordinated barrage ability to make use of the house like that. That would be very interesting. Victory points wise, Luke has a time lead over Angarden at the moment. He's also got the K1 and he's going for B4 himself. So both players are basically going for Howitzers to smash the other guy into pieces. Good God. You rarely get to see any sort of like artillery duels like that in the game. Certainly not in one versus one, but here we are. Ungarden vs. Luke Preystone, artillery enthusiasts. K1 there, pushing back the Grenadiers. Machine gun bunker number two attempted around the center. He's really intent on those, that machine gun bunker on the road. The has been with an Nothing can the Ungarden is getting out there. Nothing. They said to him, it could not be done, that it should not be done. Ungarden said, watch me. There you go, P4 almost done. I would have to see how the B4 gets you to five second barrage is just not really making much of an impact for scientists, you know, reeling itself to loop. B4 setting up to fire here. It's 203 millimeter shell. It's gonna go for the pack 40 here, it's gonna go for the bunker, it's gonna go for the Panzer he's just gonna hope he hits something. In this case he hits nothing with it. Bad luck there for Luke. Bad luck. Though so far, now the house has really managed to hit anything. So suppose that's something like neither the player so far gaining ahead thanks to the howitzers. Did we hit something? Maybe? I, I don't know. I hope. Otherwise Beardy is gonna beat me again. There we go, got the bunker. Again. Like I'm surprised he doesn't try to build around his south rather again in the middle of the bloody road. Field bombarding. Ooh. Snug up, check to take out the B4 Howard, sir. Cheeky bastard. And he's gonna, I think, try to take it out with his own howitzer then. I guess that's another way of doing counter artillery operations. Oh, almost got Petra there, but he managed to pull away, though he might be a bit deaf in this one of his ears. Strom gets your toughly down there, Van Gleifen. Still pretty close between the two players, pretty close. B4 takes it a few crewmen killed, so the first actual kills for the howitzer is shooting another howitzer. That's magical. Enemy are North going to the victory point there. There we go, another kill. Yuri blown clean off. Oh, that was a big miss there. Big miss. 
North bit more scrambling, can Kieran push it back, they're going to lose, but it is Panzer first, it's Stuke, Panzer Wolf could possibly try and go for it, and there you go, Panzer Wolf's going out through the centre, supported by Pioneers, a few other men, we've got a blitz, we move off here, Prioritise in the field gun first, since he can get rid of that, he can more so, I think, go for the uh, K1 with his Stug. That is almost good to go again. He could get the officer in there, but it's a call in the city barracks, except he does not have the munitions. So, never mind that. Trying to catch the panther with the field gun, it's so close, it makes it very difficult for the field gun to turn about. And there he goes, Duke goes for the K1 shoot, bounces off the side. Panther 4 there with 15 kills, almost got the field gun there, almost got his Duke takes a hit. That's a good to go, and there you go. Field gun crew almost dead. And pop goes the weasel. Beefle gets ready to fire, and. Stu goes again for the K1, there he goes, shoots, penetrates. Looks like it's going to try and catch the Panzer over the B4 and. Ah, misses. Close one though, really close, but not quite there. K1 passing all the shots from the Stu again, the Panzer 4, but it's not understand how we've got the pack 40 moving up. Shot bounce off the Stu's front line, that's pretty lucky there. And there you go, Luke ends up surrendering. A loss to the Red Army. The 10th tank caused from force back here, but the Kampfgruppe von Salken. A brutal battle here with big guns on both sides. In the end, Angarden persevered. I think part of the issue again was that sort of command paralysis from Luke, who played tactically did well, but strategically again, it felt like he was, you know, trying on a new pair of shoes and just wasn't entirely sure where to go with them. And I do feel like that hurt a bit. I mean, I think in this case, you've been better off. He just, you know, tried to make some wild guesses as to where he wanted to go and they just push it with faster pressure. He's done now. I think it actually had a much better chance than Angarden around these parts where he just floated so much manpower because he wasn't entirely sure where he wanted to go. And I guess I'm going to try using the coordinated barrage ability with his officer a bit. But as I say, nice play there. Good use of infantry, good use of machine gun, good use of mines. And start with the machine gun bunkers in the middle of the road. It's never going to work. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this first part. We'll be back here with the next part, which is going to be a Refero versus Lermist. So see you all in a few moments. Cheers. Good afternoon. Oh, well, welcome back. <laughs> Absolutely old habits there. Welcome back to the second half of this double feature. It's the Refero vs. Lamnest on Holotnif Emma Winter. Setting is still the Eastern Front, but this time it is back to the Baltics. The German army here, a small Kampfgruppe, the Kampfgruppe von Sarken, or the Panzergruppe von Sarken. Right, for Sarken, Strachwitz, this time I'm messing about here. My apologies, that's sort of slightly planned out in the head, but you know, accidents happens. All the way here, Os. Truppen Doctrine with Infantry, Panzerfaust, Anti-Tank Gun, Bulletin for Referral vs. Nice, Loveness, Fighting for the Soviet Union, Socialism, Comrade Stalin, and the 7th Tank Corps, here with Guard Motor Armor Assault and Tank Hunter Tactics with Infantry, Penal Troop, and Guards, Rifle, Bullets, and Stuffing Gnees, clearly going to go for a lot of Penal Troopers here as Jarl Referro sets up the Ostrom here, Pioneers as Engineers, Shots being fired back and forth here, Engineers make a run for the house, quickly kicking in the door, locking it behind them. And then shooting out the windows. Morstone pulling out here for Refford as he sets up. Uh, Bristol with the machine into the south of the Ostrom hanging north at sea. Might have felt like he should have rushed the house a bit faster. He's denying it to uh, Loveness, which means the compartment here is going to be a bit infested with a Russian rats. It's going to make it much more difficult here for Refford to gain control of it. And in this case, he's also wiring off here to make it harder for future down the road here at Refford to quickly get into the house. Even if he abandons it, he's going to be able to quickly sneak out there. So, really sneaky play there by Loveness. Really sneaky. He's trying to wire off the other entrance of those he can't even enforce the compartment. We got the penalty was inbound. Black and Wasp here for Refro. Big boy, that's that machine gun you can go for here. May go third squad on the way. So penalty we're gonna probably put, just pull up behind you, just begin shooting the pioneers in the back. And there you go, Refro's pioneers very quickly retreat. Awesome ground the northern fuel point here in the south is extending further forces and efforts. Grinding points here, we got more people from the way there for Lovenest. Also from further in Norfolk here, slowly creeping ahead. Lovenest, a man who said that if other people talk in hushed tones about the devil, the devil talks in hushed tones about Lovenest. He's terrified of Lovenest. People were sending out here, also from sending about. And again, finding from around the compartment. Really nasty bit of uh, shows his Iranian really can make it difficult for the Western players to, you know, do what he wants to because the opponent, the Eastern player, gets into this is going to be 
absolutely ridiculously difficult at times to get out of there. He's going to eat flame for us and possibly even a mortar, but at least flame for us have a chance of sort of pushing him out. We'll see though what referee goes for. He could go for another machine, go from Ostrom, and there he go, goes for the second machine gun. Finally grabs the southern fuel point. He's always leaving several troops to defend here because, I mean, otherwise, you know, he's going to just get risk getting rushed. And we can see that we've got the scout coming away. That's going to be able to take advantage of the Ostrom because there's no infantry company. Most players at the moment, if they do go for Ostrom, they tend to skip the infantry company. And then, of course, try and hope for the like to make a nice company to pull through. So there could be a bit of situation here for Refro. Sandbox up at the center victory point here. Pion was holding by the MD42 in the south. Ostrom advancing as well. Could fed in the southern fuel point gloriously for the fatherland. And there we go, Flamin Werfers. In his ground, the point here, we got the scout cart for Leuvenest. Rushing down here. Scout rolling extra into the Ostromo, who's not expecting the scout car. He also not present machine like that, and again, he has no panther thrust. He has absolutely no way of seriously stopping that scout car. So right now, Leuvenest has a very vicious motorized vehicle, which should give Refro one hell of a time. On North Austin, this scrimmage with the engineers. Scout car, they're rolling ahead. We got no telemines, we got no Panzervas, we got absolutely nothing here to start the scout car. So, right now, Referro is in a very rough spot versus Lovenest. And Lovenest is clearly aware of it, he's going to take advantage of it as much as possible. He's basically like a kid who found the key to the candy store in the middle of the night, and he's up to no good. And, of course, stuffing his face full of candy. But also no good. More people away there for Lovness, but she can need to fall back. Like to make a nice police build there for Efro. He's gonna have to go for it fast though. And as soon as he got ready, can he go for the Panzer fast? Like the Magnus is gonna be a two-to-two to back his uh Ostrom up as the scout can versus the penal troopers there. Lovness like a is gonna go for some sort of doctrine to back up the penal troopers versus any like vehicles, possibly guard motor here, though of course he could also just equip his penal troopers with anti-tank rifles, but I don't know, you, in this situation you just feel more like you just go for Guardsmen instead. And there you go, Gart Motor for Lovenest. Strafnik is a press pupil and then the North being lost. Also pressing from the South there, Lovenest keeps up momentum, keeps up the attack. And there you go, 2-2 two two here for Refro. Pantavas off in the scout car, taking down half of Pioneers following up here. Pursuing the scout car with vigor, vim, and utter seal. There you go, scout car's going to wreck the bar wire, ruining their efforts hard work. He's trying to get close to the scout car, but the unit's blocking off there, making it hard to get close. We've got under tank rifles up. He is clearly anticipating the scout car himself to take out his own scout car. So he's trying to bring up the counters in the scout car in the form of under tank rifles. Cheeky, but. Good foresight there by Lovenest. Also, in this case, La Refro sends an opportunity to go straight for the car point, launches in a few Ostrom to do the dirty work of Deutschland. And go to the two out. He penalties were being rushed by the P oh, rushing the Ostrom, who are themselves alone and help they have to retreat. Medic Bangan could be a consideration here for Refro at some point. In the south, two to two rolling ahead. Goes for half trick here. I'm guessing a flame for a half trick to burn out the Russian infantry. I could go for an upgraded one, just be able to reinforce the troops at the front line, giving his Ostrom a bit more durability. Either way, 22 runs in and runs off the penal troopers. No chance of the scout half track. Oh. Builds a bunker instead. Medic bunker. Can understand why. Still good at rattling from both players, getting, of course, a good control idea of what is important, and that is fuel. Excellent play there. Back here, reinforcement healing going on as well there. Medics had to work at patching up Lavner's troops. My god, you look like you've been shot! Yes, I have! Oh, sorry then. There you go, Gart Motor, or Gart Raps brought out into Lavner's. Makes it a lot of sense in this situation. They're quite strong. Versus Ostrom with the DP Lap Machine, of course, and of course, there's the 2 2 as well. So, I mean, it's just a really straightforward choice here for Lavner's. I mean, it's not even does he not go for Gart's rifle. He goes for them. Like, the choice has been made. If there ever was one. In fact, it might just have been an illusion of a choice. In a sort of philosophical experiment of sorts. Austin pushed back, and of course, penal troops inside the scout car also serve as a counter to the scout car. 
So now you guys are going to go for more. It's going to have to go for something else. Pack 40 could prove to be a helpful idea. Pans are going to do something would also be a great choice if it was all this infantry. So then pack a bit more firepower on the move than his Ostorben. So could be a sensible choice there for Refro. Instead, we do get the officer out, which is not a bad choice either. That is fairly seen with Ostorben doctrines. And of course, the compartment here continues to be an absolute pain in uh, Refro's neck. A thorn in his side. An Italian in North Africa. He has to bail out. More parties on Earth for Earth for the help to repair his vehicles. Well, vehicles the man to lay down some mines. Good tell mines. Good help. Well, S mines as well here. Versus Lovnest. Yeah, that scout car is proving to be an absolutely amazing investment. A real strong county to Earth for strategy. I mean, if you say gone for an infantry company, he obviously would not be quite as vulnerable. But again, most players, if they go for it at the moment, will pull for it. Without it, that is. And there you go, Pankvoss and the scout car. Still won't be able to finish it off there. Eh? But theoretically, we could still try and rush in there to 2-2. Of course, the penal troopers could take it out, depending on the situation. Far up north, we got penal troopers hunting out here behind a few branches. Trying to fall in with his surroundings. And then just appearing out to shoot at the Germans. Catching the officer here, quick for men to cover. No reference soon be taking up here. What would he be doing versus Lovnest? Picked up the 2-2 mines down there, good spot there by Lovnest. Aggressive mining, by the way, could easily been spotted, but in this case he had confidence in his ability to intimidate Refro. But just long enough for it not to matter. Pioneers seems to shit before they get wiped, though they are doing a lot of damage to the engineers. And he lost the Pioneers. Definitely not a good loss here for Refro, in particular losing the flame for us right now is huge. Big win for Lovnest. Makes it much easier, of course, for him to, you know, stall up against Refro. Which is not really something that Refro wants to happen. Definitely should be laying down mines. He might be able to get the near stun, getting a flame for a squad return. It's gonna help make it feel slightly less bad to lose his own flame for a pioneers, but ah Loveness has the devil's own life that he needs to survive against old odds. We got a TC on the way there. More pioneers there arriving, flame for us on the way. It should take up, he should bring up some anti tank weapons. At least get some telemines down because right now the for himself is quite vulnerable to a TC and light tank, and that he should be anticipating. Loudness to go for straight away. I mean, it's simply you know, one of those, you know, sort of like straightforward things like guards, rifle. If you got them, you go for them. In this case, the T7 is non doctrinal, so there's very few situations where you do not go for the T70. Usually, all of them are on the basis that you're far behind your opponent, but Loudness isn't, so the T7 is just a no brainer. Officer here versus the penal trooper skirmishing here. Overall, with the sap machine gets in a pistol, they're gonna lose that range to the SVT 40. Strafniki. Got the T7 in down, backing up with more penal troops. Got the main engineers with mines, which is just in case. But effort has been mining, he does not want to hit the teller mine. Good work there by Lovnest. Of course, Refra just lacks any serious counter to the T7, he mostly can stall it, and that is it. They're going to send the RPS down for help versus the infantry and of course the T70 as well. Before being repulsed, we got take out there for effort. Very good decision. Just playing for his pants as fast as possible as Loveness. I think that's going to be the right choice. And there you go. Solid Indians. Will he this time be able to finish them off with it once more? Have the, the blessings of Stalin upon them, allowing them to escape. At least to a degree. Switching the T70 southwards. Back here, nothing further going for Loveness. No tag up. And we get uh, looks there for gun on T thirty forty fives. And now we got the heavy mortar. Further troubles here on the rising for effort as heavy artillery or heavy ish artillery is being brought up there for Lovness in the form of the heavy mortar. Scout car there, bit dinged up, two to two, also rather dinged up. Seeing a lot of damage. A lot of bumps. Going to the northern point, back here, troops at the go, and we got the scout car in repairs as well. There we go, so Paul McCall Light is going to be a panzer for it, sort of A, see off against in a few charm, but also put more pressure on the infantry and, of course, the light vehicles. Certainly a very sensible choice here, though he's going to have against Gartmoth to go for Stooks because the panzer 4 is not particularly fair against the T 3045. 
simply use the Tifa plant having more health and penetration. Meaning he can simply assault more in a hit and more like to penetrate there, so he's gonna like have to go for Stutus over there. We got Smotion off here for Defo, calling in on the church. Nice work there, negating the penal troopers there, till the raining off on the machine gun position. But he's gonna otherwise have to stall here for the Pentagon while the T7 just threatens to wipe out as much as Refo has as possible. As fast as possible. Look at those fascists trying to hide behind sandbags. I think they're just trying not to get murdered, Petrov. Shut up. Pim's there holding. Oh, Satrachal from the Ostropen. Better work there, shattered. No losses there. We go, Pim's was pushed back. Doubtfully get a wipe there, the reason we got the Verefro. And meanwhile, Loveness is just came up precious, laying down mines as well. Building lots of flare mines here for Loveness. They're pretty cheap, of course, can just get a kill. And of course, in the German infantry scope, which is just four men, that is, in most cases, really great. I mean, Austria, I mean, obviously, it's less great, but say Pioneers or anything else. Taking a fourth there for just 10 munitions is really powerful. Plus, you get the flare. Pants on the way there for Efro, Loveness has yet to take up. He's going for the option 6, so he's clearly anticipating, because that's what most of our players are going to do, we know he's anticipating the uh, Panzer 4, he's going to go for a counter already. This option is going to be the option 6 to at least help deal with alongside the anti-tank rifles. So option 6, I'm M arriving here for Loveness. For the 7th tank core in the center, we've got the rifles being stalled up here. Machine guns and the lights laying down righteous fire against the Russians. And the hay motor is just wheeling about. Two two creeping up in the T seventy pants for almost down there, almost. In the south, trying to deal with the rations here. Pants pass off in the scout cup. Asian six moving towards the centre here. But Efro remains on the defensive. That's Loveness versus the Red Army. And there we go, though. Armor arrives here for the Panzergruppe von Strachwitz. Catching the gas from there, but being self caught by he's not ah oh, he's not realizing what's going on. He has to shoot it now. Good hit though. Almost got the entire unit there. If you could get a wipe hit, that'd be great for them for returning help to relieve some of the pressure he's got stuff being laid upon him right now. For some reason not allowing it to finish off. He's clearly worried about encountering any armored vehicles and wants the Panzer Water ready to at any moment, any time's to notice shoot it. There you go. Almost got the guards caught. There's a mine went off underneath them. Mines going off there, heavy casualties inflicted on the Ostrom. Half the squad is gone and flare goes off as well. Lots of mines there by Loveness, to be honest. Lots of mines. Around the corners as well here, making much harder to move just to make us, you know, turn there. So clearly sharp thinking there by Loveness when it comes to mines. I imagine Loveness has done a lot of studying on mines. Might even written a few books on mines. Obviously not named Mein Kampf. He'd be hit by plagiarism. Off of there, they're rushing the hay mortar, pants warming, and he could get the hay mortar, that'd be great here for Lefro, but uh, not looking very like. Oh, he's even boosting his panzer ball for a bit of extra of a buff there. Remember, the panzer ball can also get a boost here from the contract of fire ability. I believe the armor basically gets a higher rate of fire and it gets more accurate. So, for example, you've got a stoop being boosted by the officer, the stoop can suddenly begin firing there. That would be faster. A little fun fact there. But it's a pretty good ability to have you know how to use it and time it correctly. Shot fight there, Panther will done a deal with the penal troops, gonna catch him out on the open. Next to cover, there go, the mine goes off. So many mines from Loveness, they're just hitting excellently on Refro. I imagine much to Refro's great sadness though. And there goes from 6 one moving to deal with it, he's got no real support nearby for the Panther IV. So only highlighting the dangers of moving about your Panther IV willy-nilly against a Russian player who knows how to mine. in there you go, down to only everything 6M. Slowing it down a bit. And the center continue defense here from the to ensure that Loveness does not gain too much ground here. Still needs to pull the panther all the way back to his base, which will probably go for Stuke soon before he gets hit by T-35 from Loveness. Oh no, lost the flamethrower pioneers again and this time around there's a flamethrower for Loveness of Grand Fact. He's gone for two guard squads by now. Also now they can pick up the flame from because it's all heavily upgraded.
Rohan Mortify here from Lovenist, fearfully, or fearlessly, I mean, not fearfully, but fearlessly firing at the Germans at a pretty close point there, partly because the Halo Mortar team at Fire Man is actually still pretty difficult to kill fast and can thus can more easily get away. Like for Breffler, I think to have a good chance, he needs to surprise with both the artillery officer and a panzer going to be escort while popping the bullets to increase the firepower for a brief while, in which case he might be able to quickly clear it out. And even then, that's not exactly a guarantee here for Ford Effort though. But there you go, continue gross aggression here up north for Loveness for the third army. Breffler is doing his best to fight back, but he is not having an easy time here. Loveness just keeps punching away. Oh, he might lose the officers calling this motion to cover the retreat. The nice use of it there. Nice use of it. Oh, he continues to grab the point. It was a feint. He makes it look like he's about to retreat. He's going to retreat. And then he still stands to grab the point. Oof. Ice in his veins there, ladies and gentlemen. Ice water in his veins. You would normally not try and pull the door, but referee just didn't care. And he finally gets the scout car. Almost 20 minutes in the game, and that M3A1 finally bites the dust. OD machine living flank with the gas with grenade off in the south. We've got a slow approach here from Loveness as well on Raffro's lines. He can actually go for a Panther 4 more soon. He could also do that, obviously, but still, he needs to go for it fast out of the way. Cannot afford to do that here versus Loveness. The Bali should be considering taking up. Assault gun doesn't run the Panzer Fort, used to penetrate, back forward, shoots back, gets a nice hit off on the Ishwin 6M. Another hit there. Machine gun then turn back. Oh, gets a lucky shot in the DP. Oh, they kill another machine gun before they're able to fire him. Really bad luck there. For him, and there you go. They actually hit the dirt, which makes it much more lethal. And there you go. Panzer Fort to the rescue, forcing them back, cutting down the Russians. And not very cool blood is off. Lost several of their comrades and want vengeance as much as possible. I don't feel some time off from the second Panzer Fork, ground the southern munitions here. Lovnitz just keeps up that infernal pressure. And he's got a lot of infantry by him. We've got five squads here, and three of them are two in the guardsmen. He's got a lot of high quality infantry versus an opponent with three Ostermen and an assault and artillery field officer. He really, I feel like, needs some Panzer guns to back him up at some point. In terms of being shredded, they should also be laying down mines, to be honest here, versus uh, Lovnitz. Telemines, S mines, whatever kinds of mines, you should be laying them down as much as possible. Victory points wise, Loveness is in the lead here over Refro. And there we go, Loveness taking up here. Mechanized armor company and being built. T7 deep spotting Hetty trying to suss out what Refro might be doing. Of course, just getting targets was Howard set. I know Howard's with Norta. Smoke off here. I like his use of smoke. Yeah. Nice and bold, of course, does help. In this case, the utility officers' smoke ability is actually free to use. Ooh, grenade from the Ostrom, they're bunched up. Oh, good grenade there for Loveness. Good grenade. And the Ostrom got wiped. It means he's down to just three infantry squads. And none of them particularly well rated for fighting against the uh, Guardsmen here. He's going for tier 4. He likes to get light machine guns up in the Ostrom, which will help. Could be planning, of course, a Panther as well, but uh, either way, he should be pulling for something then soon. Like, if he's going for the Panther, he should go for it as fast as possible. If not, he should be going for that Panther 4 as soon as possible. And of course, you'll be going for light machine guns while he can go for light machine guns on. Though still, mines would also think be a great choice here for Refro. I definitely feel to be one thing he's lacking here, which could even help a lot here beside the scout car. Versus the T7 edition 6. And now we got the Lovers here pulling for the tanks. We got the T5511. There you go, Sad Shells. He needs to get away from the rest. There you go. Whew, lucky there. Not even the pine. He was right next to it. Got blown apart by that. That man, he needs a bit traumatized. Ooh, snap there, but the Asian 16 for back the Panzer 4. But many good approach in the south, he's most 11 source is currently back at the base. Panzer 4 certainly carrying a lot of the work here for Refro at the moment. T7 
50 something into the south. Keep it almost done here at four. And there you go. Pimps are being shot at, shredded, and murdered. Hands of all blitzing south to deal with the T70 rushing in here. Regardless of the cost. Good hit, hit, good hit. If you get rid of that, he shoots here for effort. That certainly do some alarms. But it's there. Go get it. He could get it. And he gets it. Big loss here, of course. There's the T for the fine bound. And in that regard, Refro lacks some serious firepower. He's got no Panthers, he's got no Stoops, and he's about to rush into, which means whatever advantage he just might have gained is going to be lost immediately. Right here, think Refro underestimated Loveness, at least forgot about the time of the match. And lost his Panther for as soon as he took out the T. So, I mean, not good here. Whatever advantage he might just have gained, gone. And now he goes for another Panther for, which again is not particularly well rated against the T 45, which just outclasses it. Guardsman, Pilgrim, and Fortress, we've got the machine and officers are moving in. Hands of all halfway done. I do think you should have gone for the heavy Panther, but if you want, doesn't want to go for Stukes, you'd be going for Panther. They've got artillery and smoke cold in here. Might be just to confuse Loveness a bit there. Maybe not, I don't know, it's hard to say. Oh, the artillery barrage hits. Absolutely none. The Guardsman basically wasting it. The unfortunate for that flow, the unfortunate pan for already, number two, T for the rolls ahead. And knocks out Refro's 2 to 2, which has done some valiant work here in service of Dust Father, but snatched away by the Lovenist. Panther 4, half a down the penalty machine going here for the Guardsman. Captain Alvin shoots and spectacularly misses. Hitting not a single one. And now I've got the Asian 6 back in action here, finally, that's 22. Nice hit there, still needs to pack 40 back in action as well, needs to grab as much head towards, he needs to line up as much in the tank weaponry here. And Teller Mines, I still feel, would be an absolutely great choice for Refro here. I mean, if you can catch the 6 with it, that would be pretty much, you know, kill. But, like, so you can catch the T-45 with it, you could have a good chance of then actually killing it, then. There you go, Panther fast off, but still doesn't quite feel like has the ability to actually finish off the T-45. So, most it's just putting out for a few minutes. Which does buy him more time, but, you know, he still needs to be, you know, destroyed at some point. He can't just keep stalling in this situation. Because at that point, Lovins is going to hit critical mass and roll over him. There we go, Rafro finally coming to the centers, going for the stronger shots. Sandbags up here by the southern victory point. Smoke called in again to help us get line of fire the Ancient Six, Pants as well. Nice work there by Refro. He's had to go a nice chunk of the map now. So just putting back Loveness a bit. The problem is Loveness got a larger force. He's still almost got the Stug though. And there you go, Sturm Geschütz, Gefecht right here for Refro. Oh, Marmandorf again. Loveness is doing amazing work with mines comparatively. Refro's doing no work with mines. Also from here, defending against the guards and flame for us being launched at the Russians. Scorching them and burning them. We got a grenade off here, though, against heavy cover units. They're not going to be that effective. There we go. Engineers push back. Up north, we got a push here by Loveness. Tifa for moving in. We can actually go for another one now. We could be pretty strong here versus Refro. And of course, Refro can soon go for another stoop, which would just be pretty good as well. There we go. More tanks for Loveness for the Red Army. So, Petro, what do you see? I, I see trees. Do you see fascists? No, I might hear some, but I, I don't see any. Ah, damn it. Now, 
Mines down there again. Lamb is very consistent. He has drilled himself into just being the perfect mine laying machine. And it is a very strong ability to have just be able to lie down, lay down mines when you see the opportunity too. That is really strong. In particular, the surgeon again with a cheap and effective. There you go, more mines out for Lugnest. There you go. Oh no, he's not paying attention. Airflow's no, not paying attention. He's going to move straight into the satchel. Oh, nine. Big loss here for Airflow. Well, big mistake. That was a huge blunder there. I guess he wasn't paying attention. There's a mistake involved or something else. Either way, he might just have lost the Panzer IV here to Lugnest. A massive. Problem, and there you go. The Panthers down, leaving Refro in a very bad spot now. Here versus Lovenist. He's pushing out the stupid. He's gonna uh, get close. He's gonna get Satchel again. I think that Refro might be a bit tilted here. There you go. Satchel's about. Oh, he doesn't have the munitions, which is a small piece of luck, but still, this is completely horrific. And up north, here we see that Lovenist is just crashing Refro otherwise. Shots fired. Down. Panther fast off. Keep the puzzle in through here. A last ditch defensive by Refro. Going for more shoots, but at this stage, I would say it's just GG. I do not see Refro winning this, short of Loveness having a stroke. Pack 40 wipe again. And there you go, GG, game over, loss here for the German army, a victory for Mother Russia, a brutal fight here, I would say certainly highlighting the power of mines, I mean, mines have, I would say, play a large role here, and uh, Lovness control the field, they're also just really great light vehicle use, and of course, understanding what Refro's strategy, encountering it early on with the scout car, but Refro, meanwhile, felt like this wasn't quite able to react to Lovness moves quite as nicely, and also, I feel like, failed to make use of his doctrine's advantage, which again, you've, like, if you're going Ostrom, you got a lot of munitions floating about, in which case you want to be using them to mines, but... He never quite went there, so in many ways, Loveness was able to build up advantages, partly again just being a very, really sharp player, but also because of effort, just I feel like not quite fully taking advantage of what he was actually doing to the full extent, and also he should have been going for Panzer Gunners at some point. But there you go, hope you enjoyed this match, hope you enjoyed this double feature in general. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment, share the word, share the wealth. This is Imperling signing off, we're back tomorrow with another exciting, another riveting episode. Hope to see you all tomorrow there again, and this is Imperling signing off. Cheers.